no, a coffee would be fine. Coffee? Yeah, please. That'd be great. Thank you. Hello. Is anyone with me yet? I'm actually a little bit early. Oh, my goodness. I thought I'd uh, make an effort. Just let me know in the comments if you're here. Hi, Mersha. Can you hear me okay? turn this off. Where am I? Oh, wrong one. Where am I? Here I am. Yay! Loud and clear. My goodness, first time for everything then. Hi Jacqueline, thanks for joining me. Uh, thanks for joining me. Do you know, it is the most gorgeous day here. It's really bright and sunny, but we've just had a massive hailstorm about literally 10 minutes ago, which in here we've kind of got like one of those sort of, it's not asbestos, it, actually it might be, it, like a tin roof thing. And so it's literally like someone's just thrown a bag of nails on the roof when anything like that goes happens. So yeah, so it's gorgeous. I hope it's nice with you as well. It's cold though, really cold. Hi Kim, just colouring a gnome. That's what I like to hear. And oh, a gnome, not a gnome. <laughs> yeah, been there lots of times. Hi Letizia again. Nice to see you again. Thank you for joining me again. And hi Lisa as well. So I've got some regulars, got some real polka doodles fans in here, which is really nice to see you all. So thanks for joining me. I'll wait just maybe a couple of minutes more, just see if anyone else kind of comes in. But um, I've not really got any big news for you today. We do have lots of uh, exciting things coming up as always. Um, but nothing specific for today. I haven't got a new launch. Oh, Mr. Doodles, thank you. He's just brought me coffee. This that'll be too hot for me to drink right now. Um, thank you. Um, and um, can you hear the squeaking? Oh, I must get it oiled. <laughs> um, we have uh, just to let you know that we do have um. Watch out for us coming up on Hochanda quite soon. I don't think it'll be... Um, I haven't got an actual date yet. I haven't confirmed the date. But um, hopefully it'll be in about a month's time, I think. So end of March, probably just in time for Easter, maybe. Um, so we'll, I'll be back on Hochanda. So it's been ages since we've been on. Um, mainly because I just kind of needed a break. I can't do everything. You know, and so sometimes I'll just kind of go, oh, no, I, I just need to take a break. So that's kind of why sometimes we're on her chandas, sometimes we aren't. You know, sometimes it's a little while. Um, so what have you guys been doing? Have you been cr doing lots of crafting this week? Is it half term where you are? I don't know. I never know when half term is anywhere. Uh, it seems like it was half term two weeks ago here, but I, I have no clue. I don't know. I have no idea. So anyway, it's a, a full grab and go today. So if anybody's got anything they want me to use, I can't promise, but I'm going to try. Um, I have to confess, I kind of had a bit of a moment this morning. I was like, I really have no clue what to make today at all. Oh, Karen. Hi, Karen. Hi. So Karen is in the US. So, very nice to see you. Gosh, it's early there then, where you are. What time is it about, where are we, 2 o'clock? What is it, about 8am, Karen, where you are? 
I don't know, I don't know how many hours it is, whether it's six or eight hours or seven. So she's right on the other side. Nine! Oh my god. Okay. So. Okay. So, sorry, I'm just reading some comments. So, Karen's nine hours behind. So that is, I can't even work that out. Five, seven, nine. If it was five, it would be 9 a.m. So it's 5 a.m. Karen. Oh, it's 9 a.m. Okay, so it's 9 a.m. So it's 7 then. <laughs> no, 5. I don't know. Oh, don't. I've actually got a headache. I've just had to have a migraine pill. And I'll warn you now, I get side effects. And they make me a bit do lolly. <laughs> I've only had a half. But they do make me slur my words, so I'm not drunk before I even start. And, yeah, the mind just goes, so anything, literally anything could happen. This is quite often why things go so wrong on TV when I do TV demos. Because if I've, I quite often get a migraine when I, with the driving and everything. And, um, <laughs> yeah, don't laugh at me. I am, I'm actually quite good at maths, believe it or not. It's just the time zone thing. It's just like my mind's just gone blank. Right, okay, I've got my, my cool little daisy jumper on, which is my favourite jumper in the whole wide world. So I'm in a good mood, so let's get started, shall we? So I hope what you're going to like, like I said, it's grab and go, so there's not really any planning, but I kind of have planned a little tiny bit, because I think the last couple of projects have kind of not been that great. I've not been that happy with them at the end. So I was kind of like, I need to just prep it just a little tiny bit. But like I say, if you want any, me to try and use something, just let me know. If I've got it around me and I can just grab it, then I'll try and include it. But we've got quite a lot going on today in this project. So we've got a few extra people in. We've got Lisa from South Africa. Wow, hi. So we're from South Africa to the USA. We've got, uh, who was it? Lisa's in Michigan, so it's 9 a.m. there. Um, if you are coming up in the comments as Facebook user, if you want your name to be shown, so I can just give you a little shout, if you just uh, click the, there's a little link at the top that says it's to do with Ecamm, and you need to just give them permission to post your name, basically, in the comments. They don't collect it. We don't do anything with it. It's just literally a data thing. So um, if you want your name to come up, then just click on that link at the top. And um, we've got Nola. Um, I don't know where Nola is from, but first time watching. Oh, oh welcome, newbie. Right, okay, let's get started then. Let me get switched over onto the correct camera. And here we go. So bear with. Like I said, anything can happen. <laughs> oh dear. Let's go. Okay, I'm here. Right. Okay. So the what I'm going to do today. I thought uh, I did actually have someone. Whoops, I've got stuck. Um, I did actually have someone ask um about Echoline markers. Uh, last time and I love using Ecoline um, so I kind of thought that we I'd show you the Ecoline markers we don't actually stock them in the store um, but um, you know they are widely available sorry I'm just dropping everything and I need a tissue my nose is running now as well and um, oh hi Winnie hello so Winnie's up in Scotland, we've got someone from the West Midlands, awesome. Right, okay, so I'm going to just not look at the comments because it does distract me and I, I break it up too much. I'll try and try and keep track of everything as we go. So, I'll be quite honest, this morning I had this bright idea that I wanted to do a template and I actually spent about three hours on... Uh, creating an SVG file for you and it was actually really cute but it was way too small and because of that I've not used it so um, watch out because I was going to give you it for free and I will give you it for free I just need to actually create it in the first place and, and actually set it up I think it was a bit ambitious to actually try and create it 
this morning on the day of the live. So um, I'll email out when it's, um, or I'll give you a heads up in the group when it's actually available. So it was kind of like plan B, well not a plan really, um, and then it went to plan A, I must confess, and I'm going to have to take my jump off because I'm actually way too hot just so sorry my little daisies have to go uh, I've actually got four layers of clothes on here because it gets so cold in here so it's not like I'm uh, anything's happened so I'm, I'm into stripes now so if I send you a bit too lally I'm sorry but it should be okay we're only here okay so um yeah so I kind of was going plan b and then it went to plan C, then plan D. I nearly gave up and kind of thought, it's not a good day. I'm just going to cancel. But then I was like, no, no, I, I need to carry on. So what I'm going to do is, in fact, I don't even, I told you, look, I'm rambling this because of this pill. So what I'm going to do, this might not be a really long hour project. Phew, thank goodness you're all saying. Um, so <laughs> five layers of... <laughs> Five layers of clothes yeah I know this is me all the time four yeah four five I often have a cardigan on um yeah it is really cold in here and then in summer it's literally like being in a tin and it literally you just bake it's horrendous so anyway I've actually created I'm just very aware I only ever really make flat cards so I kind of thought, I want to do an easel. I haven't made an easel card for years, I don't think. And I kind of thought I was playing around. And so I just made this one. And I did actually measure this wrong. So I really wanted it a lot deeper. But I was doing it and I thought, oh, well, it's fine. It's going to work. It's fine. Not a problem. I hate throwing things away. And then what I do is I kind of put it to a side and then never use it. And I end up with loads of scrap and stuff like that around me. So... What, what, what I'm going to use is, um, Mr. Doodles challenged me actually. So Mr. Doodles said that he wanted to challenge me to use the vintage tech stamps, which actually are a huge selling product for us. Lots of people love this. We sell so many of these. Um, it's been around for a little while now, but it just continually sells people buy it every single day and i think it's because it's just such a versatile useful set that you can use it's got this tiny little text here and it's kind of like <coughs> excuse me it's like um <coughs> newspaper text then we've got a script and then we've got a slightly more open script here so there's three different stamps in that set and it's one of our um four by four sets so it's nice and affordable so if you don't have that one i really highly recommend it because it is really really useful so mr d challenged me to use that and really it doesn't kind of really go with what i'm doing but i'm gonna try so we've got that there that i need to try and use um and then the other thing that i want to use is this stamp set now do you know i don't know what the name of this is how bad's that um it's in the, um, oh God, what's it called? Oh, oh God, I honestly, recall, gone. Um, Weirdry. I <laughs> don't know what I'm thinking of. I was, I was thinking Winnie because I've been talking to Winnie in the comments. Um, yeah, it's part of the Weirdry kind of series that we did, um, I think it was last year. Um, and I love this stamp set because they're really nice big open images so they're really easy to create with and um, you can do quite a lot with them you can either you know really go all out mixed media or they just work really nice you know they're just really nice stamps to use so we're going to use that set and then we're also going to use this set so I'll just grab some scrap paper here just in case I've got some ink around and then we're going to use this set which um, I think this is called Wow, chirp chirp or something like that. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, this is one of my favourites. I absolutely love these birds. Uh, just can't get enough of them, and I've not used them way enough in anything that I've done. So we're going to use those three stamps, and then we're also going to see if we can 
bring them together with an omi okay so we're going to kind of do a proper mix of stamping and digital today and i haven't forgotten i said yes last week about kind of giving you a silhouette tutorial and stuff we're going to do that as the, i will do that but i need to kind of plan it out and i actually haven't had time yet um i think what i'm going to have to do is actually record some bits for you otherwise i think you might go crazy with all the clicking around that i'm likely to do so let's crack on so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to grab some cardstock and this is just plain white card and i'm going to use um a versafine ink pad uh, which is actually my favourite ink pad to use and I like it because it just captures all the fine detail so you know yeah I do sometimes miss things if I'm stamping or whatever you know I might make a mistake and not I d I'm not um I do have a, a stamp platform and I've got about four like everybody else else has I think um and you know what for some reason I just never use it I don't know why I just I don't know, I just never seem to use mine. Anyway, so we've got this um, really cute ladder. So I'm going to use, leave them there so you can see what I'm doing. And stop that all falling off there. So I, I want to stamp the ladder and we're going to cut it out. So I'm going to just put that down at the bottom here. And there you go. I've kind of not stamped it properly, let me... Let me have another go at that one. Now, a little, I'm glad actually that happened because I was just going to say a little trick that I have as well because we're going to need to cut this out. So a little trick I have is that if you stamp really close, when you've got something straight, oh, let me turn this over, make it pick zero already. I think we're in for a bit of a session, girls and boys. So a trick is when you've got a straight edge like this and you've got a really straight stamp, if you actually stamp right down the edge there into the corner, I know you don't always have the ability to do it depending on what you're doing, but it's all smudged, never mind. What that actually means is it makes it a lot easier for you to cut out because I don't even need to cut this edge. So I'm just going to trim that around and I actually want to... I'm going to give you all some cutting out tips today because I love cutting out and my biggest tip is look at the size of these scissors this is a proper full size pair of scissors use the correct size scissors for the size of thing that you're cutting out so if you're cutting out something really small then use a small pair of scissors if you're cutting out something that's big then use a big pair and I don't know if you can see, but because these are so huge, I use the full blade. So I only actually need to go one, two snips, and that's actually done. And it cuts right across the top. And then if I want to, I'll just get my little scissors and I come in. Now, one thing I always say to everyone about cutting is, because I see some, there are loads of crafters out there and they only ever want to use a die and dies are great but oh my goodness i could not be there's just times when you need to just get your scissors out because by the time you faffed about trying to cut something out you can easily easily cut it out with scissors or your craft knife and my biggest my second biggest recommendation is those scissors you need those scissors and i'm talking about brand as well so these are both from fiskars so fiskars scissors to me and it's just my opinion but fiskars scissors are the absolute best in my opinion and in terms of a craft knife you want a scalpel and these are by far and above better than any other craft knife that there is but also long term they're much more economical because you can always buy the blades from these in art shops you never ever if you go in an art shop you will always be able to buy the blades and they're really cheap so and they're much 
um, because you've got a solid metal handle and there's no swivel on a lot of craft knives they have like the scalpel bit or the knife bit and it's inserted into a plastic handle and that immediately means that the blade and the handle and um, can actually wobble around this knife is absolutely solid and it's the wobbling that actually um, first of all can uh, be a little bit more dangerous and you're more likely to cut yourself with something that wobbles around or isn't really solid but also it's just that you can actually hook can you see how I'm holding this and there's actually a little nick in the blade here can you see that so this little nick here I actually hold I have a finger so when I'm holding it let me see if I can do it so I'm holding it there like that and my fingers well away from the blade but what it means is when I actually cut I put my finger on the paper or the card and it balances what I'm doing so I've got total control now when you you're using um, a knife that's you know more of a craft knife I mean don't get me wrong there's some good ones out there I just think this is the best of everything you cannot outdo this there's a reason why surgeons use a scalpel and I know we're not doing surgery but I would like to um, get the best cut I can so I'm holding it like this look and then basically you just press down and you just drag and people who do proper paper cutting most of them this is the knife that they will use and I've tried all sorts of different knives um, quite recently actually um, I tried I've got a ceramic one uh, which promised the earth and didn't deliver and was quite expensive actually in fact very expensive and I don't think I've ever used it um, and I always just pick this up and I've had this knife the actual base knife for 20 years um, I've got about two or three and I got them all at the same time and I just don't ever have a problem with cutting you know this the nice and sharp she says I've always got blades so I, I you get you know when you get it buy a packet of blades you usually get some with it and I'm just I wasn't watching what I was doing I was doing something else then I'm making a mess okay it's because I've got ink underneath look so that's coming out so let's just trim that just for speed honestly practice what I say not what I do is that what is it do as I say not as I do because I've not nicked in all the corners there oh right anyway okay let's leave it for now um, I don't think I actually need to cut it in fact no because it's going to bug me so just I'm going to go back through a second time and this time I'm going to make sure I catch my corners there you go. I must admit, I am careful when I'm cutting, so I think because I was talking, I wasn't really concentrating. But it's much easier to cut with a knife when you're cutting something out like that than it is with an actual pair of scissors because even these little tiny sharp scissors are gonna I'm gonna struggle a bit to get in there but you can just then go back in and tidy that out if you wanted to so anyway we've cut that out at last 15 minutes 25 minutes um, so I think what we're gonna do is we will I've got my card here and I want this ladder to go here um, but I've got another stamp here which I absolutely love and we're going to use. So this is like this um, stripy border. I'll just grab a different block. So I'm just going to ink that up and I just want black ink on that. So I'm going to actually just push this out and... I just want it, I don't want it straight, okay, I don't want it perfect, so we're just going to put that down there, and I'm going to actually do a couple more on my cardstock. I'm 
and I'm going to do, I might do three. I'm, I'm not going to need three, I don't think, but I'm going to do three. Now again, because I want three and I'm going to cut this out, I'm going to stamp them really close together. So now, all I've got to do to cut these out is literally, I'm going to be saying that a lot today, literally, that's my, my word, you know how we all have words that we use all the time. So look, I can just cut these all out together in one go, and you can, if you want to leave a bit more of a border on, you can do, or if you want to trim it. Could have done to stamp those. What I was trying to do was actually do it so that I could just cut down once, but nice and quick. Job's done. So, um, the other thing I want to do is uh, whilst we're, we're going to kind of stamp everything and then I think we'll assemble. So, I'm going to use these vintage texts. So, let's see how this will get on with this. And think what I might do I'm going to use the whole thing I think this looks great just as a whole stamp so let's just ink so I'm just inking up the whole acetate because it won't matter if this isn't perfect let's go to the corner there let's just press down now I've got a block here so I'm going to use just take that stamp off there and I'm going to use my acrylic block on the top just to press that down obviously if you're using a stamp press then that's fine and you probably won't have any issues there you go perfect so I am going to just cut that out with my favourite trimmer in the whole world as well. Giving you all my secrets here. I've, I literally have had this trimmer for 20 years. In fact, I think I've had it for about 25 years actually. And I had three at one point and I don't know why, but I've, I've lost two. And if I lose another one, I will literally die. So I want to colour this. And let's, I'm just going to, see, I'm going to just use some antique linen and we just want to just edge it a little bit, I just want to take a little bit of colour off it, or add a little bit, of, take the white off I mean rather, I don't want to do too much. And actually, my that's just get a little bit of vintage photo. It's just a bit darker. And let's just do the edge a bit more. That's better. And the thing with crafting is, you know, it doesn't always have to be something, does it? So I'm going to trim there. Change my mind on this. So we're going to have three bits. And like, like always, I've no idea how this is going to come out. It might be an absolute flop. And I apologise in advance if it is. Okay. I might leave that there because I might reuse that again. Let me just clean my fingers. Okay. So that's those. I'll put them to one side for now. Pull that off there. So let's go back to our card then. So I want to start actually doing a little bit of building here, I think. And what we're going to do is I'm going to use this uh, big flower head stamp here. Okay. And 
always do your ink to the stamp so you can control it better I'm a nightmare for getting ink on my blocks and if you like these round blocks I particularly like them I think they feel really nice in your hand we do actually have these in the store so uh, this ladder is going to go here and I'm going to I want my flower to kind of go up there roughly okay I'm just going to grab another block and I also want to stamp the other flower from this set as well let me just have a look at your comments I'm just sorry I just wow oh lots of you here Canada hi oh wow whoa where was that well oh, I lost it Jane likes Tim Holtz scissors yeah Tim Holtz scissors are pretty nice they're actually um I think most of the Tim Holtz scissors are actually made by Tonic and uh, a lot of Tim's tools are made by Tonic and I actually love them I keep smudging a little bit today I'm a bit heavy-handed now I'm just going to get here uh, I'm going to use a sharpie mainly because I think my pro marker might run out and all I'm going to do is I just want to make a stock and we're going to make a stock here for this one as well okay and that's all you need to do anyone can do that just to join those up now we can actually attach this and how am I going to do this let me think yeah what I'm going to do we're not going to have glue gate this week I'm determined so I'm going to put a bit of glue at the bottom here and then I'm also going to put glue and I'm going to just use this glue gel at the top just to give me a bit of dimension and we're going to add it so it's going to sit on top of that flower and actually I want to pull that up I think to there yeah now um so over here, let me think, I'm kind of going to play around a little bit. So I'm kind of like trying to decide where I'm going to put things. So over here I kind of want to put, like maybe do something like this. So we're going to have, I don't know, we'll have, I kind of want it just to look nice and mixed media -y without it being kind of too full on. Let's see. I, don't know. I kind of want those I've got it in my head I want those crossed over so maybe something like that so that's going to overhang the edge but it's okay because this is actually six inches so it'll fit a five by seven or an a5 uh, envelope if you're concerned about that in any way so let me just get rid of this ladder stamp and this one because I'm going to end up getting covered in ink where did this thing go already covered in ink yeah okay so the next thing I want to stamp out is from this birdie set we've got this lovely little bird house here and I'm going to use the birds as well so let's grab the birds I might come back and use some more of these stamps I'm not sure um, right so I'm still stamping on my scrap So I want to do my birdhouse. Now, just to save a little bit of time, I have prepped a little bit, but it was only in that, I'm not ruining my grab and go concept. It was only because um, I wanted to, I want to do some colouring and I want to um, just save a little bit of time. So I've already done the birdhouse here. So I've, I've stamped it just in the VersaFine again and cut it out. And what I want to do is I want to actually stick that onto the top of the ladder. 
So that is going to sit there. So now we've got a bit of a 3D kind of look going on. So this, this, the card's going to get a little bit bigger. If you wanted to, it is sticking up quite a bit. Could maybe just push it down a little bit. That might be a bit better. So we can just stick that down a bit more. And I'm actually going to secure this down but I'm just leaving it empty open at the moment um, so that I can actually attach other things in in fact let me I'm going to do that now so I, I just want to so it's not really going to be an easel I'm just using the easel bit I just wanted a bit of a I said to you last time I have a thing about pockets and flaps and you know like little tucks and surprise things and just that that sort of engineering of your paper which to me is what makes it paper crafting so I'm just using some red tape just down those edges there and you know all the little all these kind of like little techniques that I'm doing in the grab and goes these are the things that actually got me started in paper crafting originally so my journey in paper craft was I've always been very creative obviously um, and I used to have you know I've I've worked in very creative jobs since leaving school really there hasn't been many that haven't been creative um, and um, but in a in a kind of more of a, an admin way rather than you know I was never an artist or anything oh, I can't get that off Come on, stupid thing. Get off. Thank you. I've lost all my nails as well this week, which isn't helping. So I'm just going to tuck that in. I just want to get that glued down because it's irritating me. So we've kind of now got like a single flap easel, if you like. But it means I've got a little fold in here, like a, almost like a little pocket. So we can then start tucking things in, which I really love doing. So it's one of my things I absolutely love. Um, I can't remember what I was talking about now, so never mind. I can't be important. So um, I want to show you the Echoline markers. And the first thing I'm going to do to show you how these come out and how they work, because they are lovely, is I'm going to just show you what you can do with this stamp. Because this is kind of like quite a big flower, but it works so well. And you'll see when I've coloured them up. Um, I've already coloured these and cut them out so we can save a little bit of time. But I just want to show you what you can do with these. So to me, this is kind of like almost looks like a rose. But it can be, you know, kind of lots of different colours. So it can be whatever you want. So an Eckline marker, if you've not seen them. These are from um, Royal Talons. Um, and the brand name is Echoline and these basically are a water-based ink marker and they're absolutely amazing so they're watercolor basically um, but nice big chunky pens you get lots of really rich pigments coming from them and they are I absolutely love them now how I use them how I like to let me just if you could see this desk honestly tip I need to clear some space I've got nowhere I don't know everything's getting in a mess I don't know where everything is knife out the way so I don't kill myself um right okay so I'm going to use them with my little acrylic block as a palette now in the um in the set there's there's lots of different sets you can either go for like them. I think you can buy them individually as well I think probably from an art shop or somewhere like that but generally they're available in packs of about well from six or twelve or you know a bigger set and within those packs somewhere there'll be a blender and this is really cool so this basically allows you to blend what you're colouring without needing to use a paintbrush and all you need to do is just clean it off it's got a little bit of um of a um I don't know, a uh, solution in there. I'm not quite sure what's in it, um, but it really makes everything blend really nicely. So it means that you can basically treat this as a watercolour brush. So I'm going to colour, and 
I'm just literally putting the solution down. So I want to wet my paper, and this isn't watercolour paper, this is just normal cardstock. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just add a little bit of colour. Now, just a little flick. Let me zoom in a bit. So just a little flick like that, and you barely need to put any on. And then you just come in and you use your blender and you can blend right out. And that is the easiest way to actually colour with these. And look, the blender even picks the colour up and takes it a bit further. Now the reason I'm doing a section at a time is because it stops the, the ink from bleeding. So I just want to blend each section because I, I, I do want to have this contrast here. Um, so I'm just going to do a section at a time and I just want a little tiny bit in that in there just behind where that crease is and that's enough to give me enough colour to create a shadow I just love these markers every time I've that's my blender And the, you can see, I mean, if they're blending this well, just on a, a normal cardstock, and I have to say it's not actually even a very good cardstock. It's not um, one that I would particularly, uh, I have a lot of it left over from something. So I'm trying to use it up. But it's not one that I would normally pick to stamp on, if I'm honest. But look, you can get just that amazing result. And if you've got too much ink on your blender, just wipe it off. And then you can come back and shade that back down. So um, what you can then do is you can also mix your colours as well. So here, because I've done it yellow, I want to actually bring in uh, a bit of fire into here. Now the one thing I would say is, if you're not using a watercolour base card, like this isn't, then just do a little bit at a time because it does. Go this card is grabbing that pigment really because it's very strong. And so um, if you're not careful, you'll find that you can't really blend it very much. But you can see literally a couple of dabs. Look, look how rich they are. It's almost blending too much. And actually, I'm picking up, it goes to show how rubbish this card is because it's actually pilling on the top because um, it's getting too wet. should really have used watercolour, but it's fine. I just wanted to show you that you can actually use and look if you over spill there you can take it back so you don't you know you can just use your basic cardstock so if you wanted to stamp directly onto your card you can do that so I've already done these earlier and this is how I did them earlier so I did them much darker much stronger and I just think they look fab and this stamp is just gorgeous so what we're going to actually do here and I know that was not a very good overview look what I've done I was trying to find the top there that would have given me a moment um, so um, I just wanted to give you an overview we're going to come back to them I think maybe um, of the lines and kind of what they do obviously as always you need to just play 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 now another tip for cutting out so you know this is a relatively simple image but even so I want to show you a tip so this is how I cut out I always cut my images down into smaller pieces so don't try and cut from a really big piece of card or paper because it'll drive you nuts there's no need and then I'm going to take my small scissors and the trick is that you do not move your hand so this hand is not moving so I'm going to I'm resting it on the table just to prove that I'm not going to move it so all I'm doing with this hand is opening and closing the scissors but with this hand I'm actually turning the paper so all I need to do with with my right hand with my scissor hand is I'm just grabbing the paper and doing the cut and the other hand is twisting and literally it's like you're doing one giant cut in one go 
and it's so easy. And when you actually turn this round, let me just get a dark piece of card. And I think a lot of you will have seen me do this before. But when you actually turn it round, you can see that actually that's pretty easy to cut out. It's not a difficult line to cut. But when we're looking at it like that, it looks really complicated because we're getting, our eye is getting sidetracked by all the other lines that are going on. So our eye immediately thinks, oh, that's a complicated image. But the reality of it is that it's not. It's actually a really easy image to cut out. So um, I hope, try that. Um, and I hope that that really helps you with your cutting because the, th the reason I think as crafters generally, I kind of feel like we've all got into the mode of die cutting everything and that's fine, but we don't need to. And there are times when it would just be quicker and easier to cut something yourself. And you shouldn't, I, I know over the years, I've come across a lot of people that are avoiding doing things or making something because they have to hand cut something and I just think it's such a shame I'm going to get rid of that this morning then. I think it's a real shame because you know cutting is can be really really enjoyable now we're going to decoupage these so I'm going to just I want it to come over the top of my ladder here so I'm just going to grab my glue gel again and I've this time where I've got this um stem if you like I don't know what they call that bit but I want that to be the bit that I stick down pokey pokey tool so I'm going to actually attach that there and that means then that I can decoupage that as high or as low as I want it to be so I get lots of dimension in that look but also it's dimension that if you're going to post it it can still go quite flat now, because I've got another one cut here, I think what we might do is let's decoupage it. So, I'm going to come in, and this is where, if you weren't happy cutting, or you didn't want to cut things out, I think this is where you're really going to miss out. And what I want to do here is, I'm going to shape this one a little bit. I should have shaped the other one as well, never mind. So, a bit more glue gel on the bottom. Let's layer that one as well, and then we've got. In fact, let's cut that one. Uh, no, don't think it'll work actually. So let's just cut this one out, and we're just going to go for this one center petal here. And this is another little trick. So when when they start having too much paper to cut, cut it away, trim it away so you're just only cutting that tiny little bit and it enables you to get right in and really accurate with your cutting. So that one on top there and I wanted to roll it, shape it. Okay so now we've got all that lovely dimension but it will that dimension is caused by the paper, not by glue. So the only layer there that's got glue on is that first layer at the back. And actually, if I'd wanted to, I could have left that off as well. Um, so it's actually flat here because this is where I've glued it. So we're going to do the same with this flower here, which I also cut out earlier, coloured and cut earlier. Well, I'm not too clumsy so far. I get really clumsy when I've had my pills. Migraine pills, I should say, not just any old pills. So this one is this cute little flower here. And this time, I'm going to do it a different way. So I want the dimension, but I'm just going to add it to the flower head this time. And we're going to attach that down. And I'm not going to colour underneath it. We don't need to. So we'll just attach that there and then on this one I'm going to trim that top piece away and you can see that by cutting that away this could also then be a leaf if you wanted it to you could kind of add it on as a leaf um, you know and kind of go a bit stamp soupy I know they did a stamp soup you'll have to tell me if you want me to do stamp soup 
I'll do stamp soup next time maybe. Now this one, because we've cut this and we've coloured it, I don't want to waste it. So I think what I might do here is let's tuck that behind there, like that. Let me just zoom back out a little bit. So that's starting to look really cute. And if we wanted to, I thought I had another one cut out, but I haven't. I have actually got some extra, the, some of the other flowers that were in the set cut here and coloured here as well, along with a couple of other bits and pieces that I want to use. So let's get back to what we were doing. So next I want to do our little birds. So, come on birdies, now these go that way and I think we'll use both, so I'm going to pull these up, they only take a minute and they only take a minute to cut as well, so let's stamp those, so that's this one, look at the eyelashes. Oh my gosh, I love these birds. Sometimes you just have something that you just adore, don't you? I think I would use them on every single thing I made if I could, if it didn't get boring. So let's go back to our Echo Line markers. And I'm done with them. So we're going to go with, um, we're going to keep to the same colour palette, so I've not really got a lot of colours going on. Now I'm going to just do their noses, noses, their beaks, let's have them now, got to be yellow, haven't they? And then we're going to do this one. We're going to do a pink. And actually, I should have, I did mean to do that from a palette. So you can see it's kind of pilling my paper because I've got really rubbish card here. And I'm just going to blend that out. It's fine. And then I want a blue one, a blue one that will go with aqua. So what I was going to say was, what I meant to do, this is my, my preferred way of actually colouring, is to actually pick the colour up from here, because you're more in control of how much you put on. And just blend that out. And I'm actually, you know, letting the colour be really strong here. I want it quite strong because it's for a card. But if you were watercolouring, you know, you can blend these right out and you can have them really subtle and very, very plain if you want. So, and also I'm forgetting to actually go in and just actually add a bit of that moisture on there. So I'm going to just do that on, on there. And then we're going to have... A blue heart on her, oops, and we'll have a pink wing on him there. And then as one last little touch, which just makes such a difference, I'm just going to actually kind of put a little bit of colour in the eye here. And then I've got here, can you see that? I've got a grey and I'm just going to pick that up again and we're going to just follow the grey so it actually adds a shadow. So that's a good little tip for you there. Kind of gives you a shadow for the eye and if you wanted to you can actually, if you want to make that eye pop a little bit more, I'll hold this up in a sec so you can see it a bit closer. But if you go a little bit darker, you can actually make the eye look like it's popping and it's like really 3D. 
and just add a little bit of shadow to the nose and across the top of the eyelid as well and round that round the top of that eyelid I'm getting a bit coloring I, would, I didn't want to go into like coloring too much but can you see what I mean it actually look how it makes the eye really pop from there so that's really cute make sure you put your tops on these pens because they are water based so they will dry out if you leave them uncovered so again just cut these out and you can see then I just took all these little scraps away but it's so much easier cutting when you don't have lots and lots of paper to cut from and if you want to leave that white edge you can leave the white edge it makes it nice and easy you know these have got eyelashes and all sorts going on I'm going to just cut that away though so that extra a little bit of detail just cut it away if you don't if you can't cut around that so what I do when I'm cutting is I really I know I'm going on about it but I just think it's I think it's one of those things that crafters aren't kind of aware of you know we're so busy looking at all the pretty things and being shown all the amazing techniques and then I think we kind of miss some of the fundamentals so what I do is I'm actually on my image I break it down visually into segments so each time I'm kind of cutting away a segment so like there in between the eyelashes you know most people probably wouldn't bother cutting those out but all you've got to do is break it down into a segment so I've cut a triangle there and a triangle there because I'd already gone around the rest of it so it makes it not difficult to cut out so let me try and show you what I mean I don't know if I can do it to the camera so like here you know in between these two eyelashes there we've got a segment so it's just two cuts and then you can actually pull that out so again here Oh, I've cut that one off. Not easy when I'm do <laughs> doing it high in the air. But there, I've got a little triangle there as well. Are you all still there? Have I, have I bored you all to death yet? I don't know. Right, okay, so we've got our birdies. And I think these birdies kind of need to go here. So they're talking to each other. So we need to start assembly really of where what we're doing. So I'm gonna just let me glue this one down. So let's go. I mean I don't know what purpose these actually have on here, but never mind. I'm gonna attach just put a bit of glue so I can kind of see where I'm going with it really. I don't know. I don't know if it works or not. It blame doodles, Mr. Doodles because this was his idea so let's just and that's the great thing about using a glue gel is that you can kind of move things and the other thing I like about glue gel is that you can leave things you know it'll attach just with one blob of glue so it means that you don't have to be everything doesn't have to be nailed down and I actually like that because it gives lots of dimension without um, lots of depth do you see what I mean because there's only a little bit of glue between there so it's okay for posting it's still flat um, now I don't know whether we're going to get a gnome on here or not but let's give it a give it a go so I've got a gnome here that I actually um, cut out on sticker paper and I want to trim him down onto card because it's too thin so again this is another typical thing here in fact if we wanted to, hmm, you see we could have took that down so if you don't like that you could just tuck it behind but I am just going to trim it out so again look my hand isn't moving what my right hand scissor hands not moving but I'm cutting it I'm rotating with my other hand just like if you were doing it with a die so that didn't take long at all did it and again when you look at that it's not difficult shape to cut I know not everyone's that easy everything's that easy but so where are we going to put him 
let me see I think he needs to go on let me just move that glue I didn't think there did I so I think he needs to go on the front here on the front there and then we are going to just have a bit of glue on the base here so these two a little couple can she can be sitting over here and the chatting now he's not sitting I don't know what he's sitting on there have we got something he can sit on yes we do I also have a butterfly here too oh we need to use that okay let's you see I've gone all out and it's kind of like more is more on this I think so we could have a butterfly there so I've got lots of little flowers here again from the same two sets so we'll just use those two same sets and I think what we'll do is we'll build some extra flowers up in here so it looks like he's not actually floating so I'm just bending those forwards a little bit and it's all the same colour palette so I've only used about three I think I used the same pink we'll have one down there There's something else here <clears throat> pink orange yellow green that's literally it and the, a bit of blue and that's it so we'll put that one behind him so he no longer looks like he's just floating around there which is good and actually let's swap that over for a red one for a pink one rather so I hope you're enjoying this I know mixed media isn't everyone's style but hopefully you've be something that you can take whatever your card making style is from this project it's very busy <laughs> Right, and then lastly, see, it would have kind of been nice if we'd had three threes. We need a three. There you go. That was irritating me that it was only two there. So we've got three. And then lastly, we just need to actually kind of put some kind of sentiment on there, don't we? I've got another, I kind of feel like I need another butterfly. Maybe we'll put it somewhere else at the end. Oops. Oh, I've got it. Glue on me now. So I have here a sentiment set, and I'm not sure which one it is. And I love our sentiments. These are all designed. I don't know if this is super sentiments or not. I think it might be a different one. Um, but these are all designed. There's several sets of these. Um, they're all designed so that the font is the same in each set. You, so you're building up an actual library and collection of these sentiments so they're always going to be the same size so you literally can almost put any word together that you can think of or any phrase or sentence which means that you can really tailor make your own sentiments to how you want them to be so uh, let's um, so I've got spring summer autumn winter happy birthday with love wish anniversary super awesome day hello thinking wishing incredible sending special time everything i love the phrase happy everything um let me see what else is really happy everything very hope like we've got here hope is everything or best ever you are the best ever from us so you can actually put sending special wishes from us to you um, or you can say from me to you so there's too many I can't think 
let's have a let's do happy spring birthday let's do that one so I'm just gonna I don't want these just ink those up and then we can cut these down so I'm just going to snip into those and we just don't even worry about lining them up because if they're a little bit wonky they look a little bit quirky and it's just a really quick way of doing a sentiment so happy do the gel again I think so we'll go happy spring and overlap them because then they look really cute happy spring birthday do we need the other Oops. do we need the other one we could no it's too much there's just a little bit too much going on here i can't think and there's two there's actually something that i've missed uh, this bird has a crown and i actually really want her to have a crown look and to me that just finishes it off so that is it i think i don't think we can go much more i think it's got enough crazy going on there quite honestly there's a lot on that card so what do you think do you like it is it a yay is it a nay you can be honest i don't ever take offense at anything anyone says to me i wouldn't still be working in craft if i did um <laughs> so um i forgot to say at the beginning that anybody who's left a comment comment will be in the draw for uh, a little giveaway so if you've left a comment, I'm just going to randomly pick a comment out. There's no criteria for it. It's just literally a random one. And let me... Oh, gosh. I've been stood up that whole time. Let me just see if I can get all this rubbish out of the way. And maybe I can give you a different view of that card. Where are we? There we go. So, there you go. What do you think? And you got the prints in there nicely too. The prints, yeah, the sentiments, yeah. And they did work in the end. I think what I would have um, done is actually maybe added a little bit of colour in the background. It would have looked quite nice with a stencil. It looks a little bit white in the background and the same on here as well. Um, but I forgot to pick my stencils up so I haven't got any with me um, and the other thing do you know what the, the other thing that I would just finish it off with I can't resist a bit of twine so let's just I think there's some there's a little bit of a white corner down here that's driving me a bit nuts so I'm just gonna just move that here so I'm just wrapping the twine so if you haven't seen me do this before so just wrap it around your fingers like so squish it together in the middle and just a couple of times and then and this is garden twine so forget buying craft twine buy garden twine from a garden center it's so much cheaper it literally lasts forever i bought this and i think it was about i, I well i don't know i've had it for years and years it was a massive big roll like this before um, and just tie it in the middle like that just tie a knot in it so it doesn't come undone and then you can you can actually adjust it then how you want it and you've got a really nice scruffy kind of tag going on it's got like a couple of different like little ends on it there and then what we'll do again just because we've got the gel and actually this is the best thing to, to glue them down with anywhere I need to clean that off a bit of gunk going on so I'm gonna just squeeze a bit of gel onto there and let's see 
actually moved all that. Bear with me. If we actually, yeah, look. So it's about where you position things. And that needs to glue down actually on that side a little bit. But um, just by position, even though that's quite big, just positioning it behind the little gnome to kind of ties it all together, I think. So, oops, there we go. There we go. So that's it. So that's our session for this week. So I hope you've liked it and enjoyed it. Thank you for sticking with me. I don't know if you all still, I know some of you are here. I don't know if you're all still here. Um, so let me, uh, let me just switch the other camera back on. Hey, I'm back. Um, so who's left me a comment? I need to pick someone out. Let me see. Let me read your comments. The minute the word craft is added to a product, it quadruples in price. Well, I have to say in some cases, I kind of agree with you. I think it depends what it is. I mean, we do have specific need as crafters. Not every, you know, not everything translates over on card and specifically card making I'm talking about. Um, you know, I often kind of find things and they're not always good you know I kind of think oh that'd be great for cards and then when I buy them they're not and so the you know the thing is that we have to remember that there's manufacturers like us out there and we it, it's actually because we don't produce as much as someone else so for instance I've bought in view of Bluegate over the last three weeks so the other day I was so frustrated about the foam tape, tape situation. So I bought this from Amazon and I don't know how much it was. I can't remember now. It wasn't, I didn't look at the price. I just looked at, well, I kind of did, but you know, not horrendously. I was just like, I want a nice thin tape. This is window sealing tape, glazing tape, but they're calling it craft tape as well. <coughs> Excuse me. And, but the thing is, that if this was made by a craft company it would be developed for card making so it would be acid and lignin free probably they would use a particular type of glue and what we're paying for in craft products is all the research and development that it goes into actually creating these products and so yeah there are some things that you know kind of make be priced a little bit higher for if it's a craft thing but generally it's because if I wanted to produce this I'd kind of have to go to this company and say can you make me this tape and put my brand name on it and everything else and they'd say yeah but they're going to charge me extra because I'm going through a third man so you know it's kind of like we're crafters we're not we're not factories you know if I had a glue factory I'd make this stuff by the dozen believe me um and so we always have to remember that there's the more people you have in that process, the more everyone takes their little cut and then at the end, obviously that, that price goes up. So that's kind of why it happens. And because we're not producing hundreds of thousands of these things, you know, we're crab making is quite and crafting is quite a small market. It's not like when you go into like your high street shop and you might find I don't know, a packet of embellishments on the shelf in there. They might be selling a hundred of those every day. Whereas if you go into a craft shop, your local craft shop, they'll be lucky if they sell one of those every day. You know, and that's the difference is it's actually about the volume and numbers. And so these big factories are going out and they might be making a million of something. And so therefore the price that they can charge to Tesco or whoever it might be, Walmart, whatever, you know, they can afford to sell that into Walmart for like, I don't know, five cents, five P, whatever it is. But if I go and try and make that product, it probably will cost me 50p because I might only buy 5,000, not 5 million of the things. And that's where the pricing comes from. So I think um, with a, you know, before we all start going on a rant, and we all want good prices at the end of the day, don't we? But there are reasons for it. So I'm just kind of going through, uh, who's that Ingrid? Kicking myself for not ordering the gnomes last week, okay. Um, yeah, because that was a special deal. You missed out there, didn't you, on that good price? Uh, never mind. Hopefully, well, 
I shouldn't say should I, but Digi Tuesday is your day, really, isn't it? If you miss that launch price, Digi Tuesday is your next chance. Um, Jane, what are you pre performing minor surgery with your Tim Holt scissors? That's uh, uh, something for another day. Yeah, your ceramic knife's rubbish as well, yeah. What brand of ink do you use? Yeah, um, I tend to use Versafine, so that's what I've been using today. This is... Um, uh, it's a it's a pigment based ink pad um but you can use it for anything that's water based and water coloring so it's really sort of fast um the and it's got oh it actually says on the back here longest lasting pigment ink pad available and i'll tell you what i've had i've just replaced this this is a new one it's the first time i've ever bought a new one in 25 years of crafting and i've still got the other one there is still some ink in it but it's just getting a little bit uh patchy so i love it and it's because it's fine details so it'll always bring out all the detail of your stamps really well um you can emboss with it as well i think but you'll need to be quite quick if you're going to emboss um I get confused with ink pads too. We do. I think we do have somewhere an ink pad glossary if you're after that. Um, maybe that's something that I need to go through. We'll do an ink pad session. Um, so let me go back. Uh, so Gigi, hello Gigi. I'm a new polka doodles girl. So didn't do well with downloading my digits but got a lovely order the other day and a friend helped me with a few images and i'm overjoyed oh that's really really nice and guys if you have problems with your digits just email or go through the chat or anything i'm always the person on the other end so it's not someone else it's me so um anything technical you come straight to me and i have a little app so if i do sleep <laughs> But I have a little app on my phone and on my iPad. So even at home on an evening if I'm watching TV or just kind of doing whatever, um, any queries do come through. So um, I can see all your Instagram comments and anything like that. So all of our social media, just leave a comment and it'll come up. And I'm not saying I'm going to get to it immediately. Um, I do have a cut-off point where I go, no, no more. But... Um, I am the person that answers all of those technical questions. So if you ever need any help, just, you know, please just leave a comment or email. Just contact us through the website. But like I say, it picks up the Instagram comments and shows me all of those in a list so that I don't miss them. I've just started using this app and it's great. Um, so, um, yeah, if you have problems with downloads, let me know. I'll hand cut the gnomes because I can't be able to take it out of the camera exactly that's kind of my feeling on it as well by the time I faffed about I could have cut them out I know some people if you're a bit slower cutting and everything and there is nicer cutting on the cameo you do get a nicer finish I've been lulled into believing we need to buy matching dies for everything yeah I kind of feel that as well and I mean we have matching dies for everything but you, well for some things but you know I kind of think it's nice to have that ease of use but if you haven't got the ability to have your die cutting machine or your silhouette right next to you when you're crafting then you know it can be a bit difficult um i'm not bored of all your great tips oh thank you these are so cute are they just in digital or are they stamps as well the birds and the flowers all of this card was made with stamps except for the little gnome so Mr Gnome he's actually my favourite gnome out of the release um, he's actually digital everything else on there is actually a stamp today but uh, I just wanted to show you how you can actually uh, kind of swap and you can use things together and everything You ha I tell you guys we have some amazing digital releases coming up soon um, oh maybe draw a clothesline between the posts for them to perch on that's such a good idea. Why didn't I think of that? Your wish is my command. I'm doing this off camera. I'm going to have to pull a couple of things up a little bit. I don't know whether it's going to work, but we'll try. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. 
Good idea, Ingrid. That was a, oh, I'm going the wrong way. That was a great idea. So I've just drawn in that little, this little, where am I going? This little clothesline here. So yeah, it does. It just kind of uh, finishes it off. I took it behind a little bit more, but a little impromptu thing. Um, it is very bright and cheerful. Um, right, okay. So, speaking of twine and whatnot, a perfect moment in twine for special things like twine can be had for a song. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, right, okay. I need to pick a winner then. So, where's our giveaway? I think because. Where are we? Because I don't know, I've not seen her before. Um, and this is why you need to sign in with your name because I'm not going to pick you if it just says Facebook user um, because I don't know who you are. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So I think our winner today is Nola Smith. So Nola, well done. Can you um, email me or DM me? Email at website at polkadoodles.co.uk and you have won a £10 voucher for the store so we'll add that as a credit to your account on the store so you'll be able to go and spend £10 um, and uh, thanks for joining me everyone I'm gonna there'll be the replay of this if you missed it or you want to go back over it or anything and I'll actually be putting it on YouTube as well so um, thank you so much it cost 3 21 already an hour an hour and a half that took <sighs> I need to speed my crafting up. If I'm going back on her chandra after a while, I really need to speed up. <laughs> it's because I haven't been crafting much lately. Right, okay, I'm going to let you all go. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, yeah, that's it. Just kind of keep tuned because I think there might be something new coming tomorrow. Just something little, something little tidgy. If you're a Cameo user or a Silhouette user, and if you like a gnome, yeah, watch out tomorrow. Okay, right. Goodbye for now. See you all next week. And as I said, if you need anything, I'm around and about on social media. So thank you so much for joining me. See you next time. Bye-bye.